So today, I figured I'd show you how to make this chain mail that I showed off in a previous video. What you're going to need to make this is some 14 gauge steel wire. I got this from Home Depot for about 6 bucks, and you get 100 feet of it. You're going to need two pairs of needle nose pliers, a steel rod that you can also get from Home Depot that is 3 eighths of an inch thick. You want to drill a hole in one end here. I'll show you what that's for later. Um, one thing that makes it a little easier to drill this hole is take a file and f uh, file it flat and then drill on the flat surface. You're also going to need a drill and a glove. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your steel rod and your drill the end that you drilled the hole in, my, my hole's right here, you're going to put that end in your drill, like so, and then you're going to take the end of your wire, and you're going to put it through the hole here. This is where the glove comes in. So you're going to be guiding it, guiding it with one hand and operating the drill with the other. So uh, let me get you a better camera angle so you can see what's going on. So what you want to do, I already started it a little bit there. But what you want to do is you want to hold it, hold your thumb over the wire and just slowly turn it, the drill and you want to get the rings each wrapped right next to the previous one um, you can always push them down if they don't, if they're not right next to each other but um, you just keep doing this until it's as far as you want to go and then I'm going to continue doing this until I reach the end. So I forgot to mention two things. When you're uh, running the drill, have it go in uh, forward, like um, if you're drilling a screw in, you want the drill to be spinning the screw so it goes in. It just makes it a little easier when you're putting the links together. And I also forgot to mention that you're going to need something to cut the wire with. I find this pair of bolt cutters works the best. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off my excess here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut right there so I can slide the big spring off of the rod. And now you just slide it off. You no longer need the glove. And now what I like to do is I like to pull them apart Just a bit. It makes it a little easier when you're cutting them apart to fit the um, bolt cutters in there.
Okay, so for cutting the rings apart, I made this little jig out of a PVC pipe. I just cut that part out so the bolt cutters can close all the way. I slide one handle in, like that, and now I can operate it with one hand. I put this hammer under here to lift this end up, so as I pull up, these don't point down quite so far. And then I got the whole thing clamped down with this clamp here. Alright, so now I'm going to show you actually cutting them. So what you do, you just cut them apart one at a time and you get this nice ring that has an inner diameter of three-eighths of an inch. And you just keep going until you got them all cut out. And then you're ready to start weaving some chain mail. Alright, once you got a good bit of rings cut out, it's time to get to the fun part and actually making your chain mail. So, to start off, you want to make what's called 4-in-1. It looks like this here. You got 4 rings inside of 1 ring. What I like to do is I take five rings like this, I close four of them, with the needle noses, You want to try and get them lined up as best you can. And then what I like to do is just take the pliers and squish them closed a bit. Okay, so once you got your four rings closed and one open, what you're going to do is you're going to take the, your open ring and you're going to put the four closed ones inside of it like so. And then you're going to close it up just like you did the previous four. And then you have your first link, so to speak.
Next I'm going to show you how to connect two of these. Alright, so to connect two of them, the way they're laying is very important. You see how that middle ring there is kind of like slanted down like that? That's what you want. You want them both slanted just like this. And what you're going to do, you're going to push them together like that. And then you're going to take, give me a second here. You're going to take a ring. I like to use a pair of needle noses. And you're going to take it. You're going to go in this ring here. This one here. In this ring. So you're going to go right in that little hole right there. And then you're going to come out this little hole here. And then you just link them together. You link them together like that and close your ring. And there you go. To connect two of these links that are up and down like this, it's literally the same thing as if they're side by side. Except now, those two holes you go through are here and there. You go in this ring, in that ring, out this ring, and out that ring. And you close the ring here. And the ring that's in the here should be laying just like this one and this one are. And then you have one row here, one row there, and one row there. This is what it should look like when you connect them together side by side. This is the link here that you use to connect this 4-in-1 to this 4-in-1. See what I, how it goes in here? It goes around and out here, and then you link it like that. And here's what it looks like with them connected up and down. This link here is the one you use to connect this 4-in-1 to that 4-in-1. goes in here, around, and out through there. And then eventually, if you keep doing that, you'll have a big piece like this. Uh, that's it for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one.